Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting, titillating, oh, orgasmic edition of Radical Rock and Record Reviews. And I'm your host, Wild Ride bassist, Mick Watkins, otherwise known as Dick Twatkins. And today, guys, we're gonna do an album ranking. You guys keep asking for album rankings. Well, today I'm gonna deliver, okay? None other than one of my favorite artists slash bands of all time. It's Halloween season, Halloween is next weekend, so I didn't think there was any other better time than to bust this out. And this could be, this could very well be the longest discography ranking that I do. The biggest artist discography ranking that I do. So, that being said, for the first time ever, we're gonna split this into two different episodes, guys. Two different episodes. And we're gonna discuss, and I'm gonna give you my official ranking. I've worked hard on this. My official ranking of one of my favorite artist bands of all time. An artist to me, one of the first bands I got into, one of the first artists that I got into when I was a kid, man. You know, and that being said, this, this artist, ever since, you know, I was a little bitty kid, three, four, five years old, this guy, this artist has always been in my life. He's always been around. This looming shadow of Alice Cooper has always been a specter haunting the life of Mick Watkins. So, you know, that being said, you know, I didn't have any choice really but to be a huge, diehard, hardcore Alice Cooper fan. And you ask me, you say, Mick, how did you get into Alice Cooper? Well, I'm gonna share the story with you. So let's take you back to, well, let's take you back to my childhood, okay? My childhood back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, little Mick Watkins, little Dick Twatkins hanging out, blah, blah, blah. My Aunt Sandy, okay? I had an Aunt Sandy, rest in peace. She's been gone now for, uh, she's been gone now for about 15 years. She passed away, sadly, 15 years ago. But my Aunt Sandy growing up, when I was a kid, she was really big into hard rock music. She was really big into heavy metal music. And she was a huge influence on the things that I liked, the kind of things I was into. Because growing up, you know, I would go into her room. Because back then when I was a kid, she lived with my grandparents. And her bedroom was like this impenetrable fortress that you never went into that you never went into. She was kind of a quiet kind of person, you know, whatever. But when her door um, would open, let's say she went to the bathroom or went to the kitchen to grab some food or a drink. She loved drinking Coca-Cola, so probably a Coca-Cola. Her door would be open and I'd kind of sneak by her room and kind of peek in. And I used to see some cool shit. She had all kinds of cool black light posters. I remember she had this one black light poster. It was like of a, uh, it's like some trippy ass like a unicorn okay flying through like the galaxy with some clouds and a big giant rainbow flying on top of it she had black lights black light posters all over room as a matter of fact see that in the background ozzy osbourne diary of a madman concert bill that was hers uh she had that hanging up on her wall and that was the first time i seen ozzy osbourne back then and these stereo speakers i have right here those were hers but anyway, you know, so I went into her room and I remember, you know, seeing on her wall, she had the Alice Cooper killer calendar hanging up on her wall, which I have over here in my room. She had that Ozzy Osbourne poster framed on the wall, blacklight posters, lava lamps, you know, see, so, so much of my being, I can give her um, the credit for, a huge credit for, you know. So with that uh, being said, Let's flash forward to February of 1992, okay? February of 1992, and I totally remember this distinctly because this was some life-changing shit for me. So February of 1992, you got Little Mick. I was at my grandparents' house on the floor in the dining room playing with my Bill and Ted action figures, okay? For people my age, you might remember Remember the little, I think Kenner made them, the little Bill and Ted action figures. I had Bill and Ted, you squeeze their legs and they would do this, like strum them, shred out on guitar. Well, anyway, I was sitting down on the floor in the dining room, okay? 
play with my Bill and Ted figures because I was a huge Bill and Ted fan then. I had Bill and Ted, the telephone booth. It was badass. And I'm sitting there and I'm playing with them on the floor. And it was kind of like late at night in the evening. And my dad, he walks up out of the basement and he said, hey, Mick, me and your Aunt Sandy, we are um, going to go to the movie theater and watch this awesome movie that I think you would really, really like, you would love. And I was like, what movie is it? And he said, it's called Wayne's World. Okay. And he's like, dude, they're just like Bill and Ted, but probably cooler. And I'm sitting there playing on the floor. And I thought about it. And <laughs> unfortunately, I said, nah, I'll stay here and play my Bill and Ted figures and drink some chocolate milk. Maybe watch WWF Saturday night's main event or something. Whatever I was watching. Maybe some USA up all night. So I declined on going to see Wayne's World in the movie theater with my dad and my Aunt Sandy. Now, I can imagine seeing that movie on the big screen and the performance of Alice Cooper being seven years old at the time. Dude, that would have blew my fucking mind, okay? But unfortunately, I didn't see it in the movie theater. But as soon as it came out on VHS, my dad bought it right here. This very copy, Wayne's World, this VHS copy. Check it out. There's the a glorious old tape. Awesome stuff. My dad bought this very copy. And I, he was like, here's that movie I was talking to you about, Wayne's World. And we're watching it. And dude, it's two stoner, got a rock and roll dudes, Wayne and Garth. And I absolutely fell in love with this movie. Wayne's World is my second favorite movie of all time. So much nostalgia, childhood nostalgia with this movie. Dude, it changed my life. You look at me like how I am today, this cool badass rock and roll dude in a badass rock and roll band doing killer, kick-ass, badass music review videos on YouTube for you all. I owe it so much to Wayne's World and my dad and my Aunt Sandy. So I watch this movie with my dad and it comes up to the Alice Cooper concert that Benjamin buys Wayne and Garth backstage passes for. And it, well, I'm not evil. I'm just good looking. Start a little fire and baby start cooking. I'm a hungry man, but I don't want pizza. I'll blow down your house and then I'm gonna eat ya. When I seen Alice Cooper break through that fucking skeleton stage and come out there with his cool band, one that I think the Pete Friesen, the dude that was in his band then, shredding on a Mockingbird guitar, a BC Rich Mockingbird. Dude, that I was like, holy fucking cool. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen in my life. So right then off the bat, I loved Feed My Frankenstein and I fell in love with Alice Cooper. And I talked to my dad, I was like, dude, Alice Cooper, I wanna hear more Alice Cooper. I gotta hear him, gotta hear Alice Cooper. So my dad, I remember we went to Circuit City, of course, because back in the day, Circuit City is where we bought all of our CDs and movies and stuff. And my dad bought this, the Wayne's World soundtrack on CD. Here's the back, there's the front, you open it up and it's got that awesome picture of when, uh, why God, why? But yeah, anyway, so my dad bought that because we loved, you know, fucking Wayne's World. So you got, Feed My Frankenstein, and I remember my dad, he had this massive stereo in his bedroom that had like his PV, uh, PV uh, his PV Black Widow PA speakers hooked up to his stereo equipment. So he could crank that, it was the loudest shit, it felt like you were at a concert. And we cranked up Alice Cooper, Feed My Frankenstein, and we just fucking freaked out. Freaked out. So from that point on, you know, I remember my dad, uh, my dad picked up, uh, because Feed My Frankenstein was on that album, my dad picked up uh, Hey Stupid. I loved that. And you know, then some years go, you know, um, some years pass, some years go by. And I remember my dad bought The Last Temptation album when that came out. So I loved Hey Stupid. I loved Feed My Frankenstein. Last Temptation comes out. Fucking love that. And it just progressed and went on from there. And I've seen Alice Cooper, seen Alice Cooper, you watch the review of it. I've seen Alice Cooper now nine times in concert. 
And, you know, I owe it all to my Aunt Sandy, my dad, and fucking Wayne's World, dude. Wayne's World. One of my goals in life, one of my biggest goals in life is to meet Alice Cooper one day and have him autograph this and just tell him how much I love his music and how much he changed my fucking life. That's it, dude. So I was wanting to share with you guys before we got into the ranking, you know, to show how uh, huge of a fan my Aunt Sandy was. These are some pictures that my aunt took, I guess, back in October of 1983. So yeah, check this out. Here's my Aunt Sandy back in October of 1983, dressed up, trying to get without the glare, say, dressed up as Alice Cooper. Pretty freaking cool. She's got a snake wrapped around her hands and she's holding a candle, looking all kind of gothic and creepy. And if you look really closely, she's got blood smeared on her a sleeveless sweatshirt that says public animal number nine that's pretty cool and uh here she is uh holding up her killer record which i still have it's hanging on my wall pretty awesome check that out and yeah i really miss my aunt sandy a lot she was cool as hell and my dad too there's another picture of my aunt sandy dressed up as alice so that's my story how i got into alice cooper so let's begin the ranking. So you've got 28 studio albums spread out between the Alice Cooper Band of Alice Cooper on lead vocals, Michael Bruce on guitar, Glenn Buxton on lead guitar, Dennis Dunaway on bass, and the Platinum God, Neil Smith. That was the original Alice Cooper group. So you've got 28 albums spread out between the Alice Cooper group, and then when Alice Cooper eventually went solo, in 1975 with Welcome to My Nightmare. So 28 albums. Let's get started on it right now and you're gonna get into the mind. You're gonna get into the mind of Mick and see, oh God, and see exactly, you know, my thoughts about Scooper. Cause we all love ranking videos. I love them, you love them. So let's get it going. At number 28, the worst Alice Cooper album there is. And it's so bad that I don't even own a physical copy of. I used to. And I thought it was pretty so horrendous that I got rid of it. So coming in at number 28, you probably guess it, is Pretties For You, the very, very first Alice Cooper album. If I had to describe Pretties For You, it's kind of like if you've ever heard the early Pink Floyd, uh, was it Piper at the Gates of Dawn era Pink Floyd? It's kind of like that. It's kind of psychedelic, kind of hippie, kind of trippy. It's kind of like Piper at the Gates of Dawn era Pink Floyd. Mixed in with the doors a little bit. It's fucking weird, and I don't like it. Okay? The only song on that album, Pretty's For You from 1969, shall I say. The only, al the only song on that album that I kind of semi-liked was Reflected, which was later rewritten for Billion Dollar Babies as Elected. So that being said, my least favorite Alice Cooper album, 1969's Pretty's For You. Okay? Coming in number 27 on my list. Got my list written down over here in my handy dandy notebook. Number 27, the follow-up album. The second album from the Alice Cooper band. This one's better, and I don't have a physical copy of this either. I used to have it, and in dire times when I was younger, I got rid of it and sold it. But I would like to get another copy of this album, because it's not horrible. But coming in number 27, my second least favorite Alice Cooper album, Easy Action from 1970. This album shows the band still signed to uh, Frank Zappa's label. Straight Records, I think that's what it was called, maybe. Still, it's kind of going towards that more darker, kind of hard rock, kind of gothy Alice Cooper sound. It's still not quite there yet. They hadn't met up with Bob Ezrin yet, who really crafted their sound. The only song that I really like on that album, I like Return of the Spiders, pretty cool. But my favorite song on Easy Action is easily Shoe Salesman. And I know a shoe salesman. He's an acquaintance of mine. I saw his... Whatever he says. I saw some marks on his arm in a line. Maybe somebody shooting up. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, you got number 28, Pretties For You. Number 27, Easy Action from 1970. So now we're going to get into the ones that are a little bit better, and I have physical copies that I can hold up and discuss with. So coming in number 26 of my least to favorite Alice Cooper albums, I remember when this album came out, 
This album came out 10 years ago, okay? And it came out uh, a couple weeks after my son Grayson was born. So that's 10 years ago. My son's already 10 years old. I remember this is the first album that I bought after my son was born. So that's kind of why it stands out. And I remember the hype leading up to this album was really fucking good. And the first single comes out, I'll Bite Your Face Off. And it was pretty incredible. I still think that's a great song. I actually seen Alice Cooper opening night of this tour. And it was the first time they ever played I'll Bite Your Face Off live. So you know what it is. Coming in number 26 on my countdown. 2011's, and I don't have it on vinyl. 2011's Welcome to My Nightmare. This album, you know, it's hard to make a sequel to such a classic, you know. So many sequels are good, but they pale in comparison to the original. Like Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2 is an awesome movie, but it's not a pimple on the ass of the original Wayne's World, in my opinion. But yeah, this album, ugh, it's got some very cheesy, goofy, dumb stuff on it. Really not that crazy about it. Opens up with I Am Made of You. Pretty cool. Caffeine. Ugh. The Nightmare Returns. Runaway Train. Last Man on Earth. The Congregation's pretty cool, which has like a uh, Rob Zombie kind of does a little vocal dialogue in it. The Congregation's a pretty badass song. I'll Bite Your Face Off. Classic Alice Cooper. I would actually love to see uh, Alice Cooper bring that song back in the set list. Very cool song. Disco Bloodbath Boogie Fever. My God, one of the worst, if not Alice Cooper songs ever. This song's a fucking embarrassment to the name Alice Cooper and the legacy of Alice Cooper. Disco Bloodbath Boogie Fever gets three poopy thumbs down. Ghouls Gone Wild sounds like something that could have been off the SpongeBob SquarePants soundtrack. Ghouls Gone Wild, a lot of them before. Na -na 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 eat a little more. Something to Remember Me By is a ballad that I think Alice Cooper wrote back in the 70s with Dick Wagner. That song's not too bad. When Hell Comes Home is pretty cool. That's a good song. It's like about child abuse and an abusive father. What Baby Wants featuring Kesha. My God, another complete shit sandwich. Oh God, I Gotta Get Out of Here featuring Vince Gill. Oh, The Undertaker. My God, this album, Alice, I Love You. No disrespect if you ever watch this video. But man, this album is a freaking turd sandwich, a shit sandwich. So you know what I gotta say? Alice Cooper walking my nightmare. I uh, don't even like it. So coming to number 25 on my list. 25 on my list uh, from, that, from 2008. Another album that the lead up was really cool. I remember they had like a Halloween special. Kind of like what they did with Welcome to My Nightmare back in the day. But I remember they had like a Halloween special come on to where it was like a little mini movie where Alice Cooper was the host and stuff. And, uh, and it showed like the three videos of uh, Vengeance is Mine, In Touch with Your Feminine Side, and Killed by Love. So you know what it was. Coming to number 25 on my list. 2008's Along Came a Spider. And yes, this is Along Came a Spider on vinyl. Bought this when it was brand new and it came out at a local radio or, uh, record store that is no longer there called Erectasy here in Louisville, Kentucky. And I know this is a very sought after vinyl in the Alice Cooper fan community. And I know it can get some nice prices, but I'll never sell this. Yeah, so there's the cool cover that's better than the CD cover. Got the gatefold of like all Steven's journals and shit. And there's the back. So yeah, this album, not good. Not good. Uh, I don't ever listen to this. The musicianship on this album, I don't know who he has playing guitar on this or who helped with the songwriting on this album, but man, it is not, not up to par with Alice Cooper's standards. I think Eric Singer plays drums on this. Chuck Garrick might play some bass. I don't think Ryan Roxy's on here. So it's produced by Greg Hampton, Danny Saber, and Alice Cooper. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet that Greg Hampton and Danny Saber did a lot of the guitar playing and songwriting on this with Alice. God, it's kind of a piece of shit, really. 
the only songs that I really like on this album are the songs that I mentioned that were in like the little Halloween mini movie thing back then. Vengeance is Mine is Badass, Classic Alice Cooper, Killer. If I was going to make a Alice Cooper Mix Picks Best of Burn CD compilation, Vengeance is Mine would definitely be on it. I know my buddy Stephanie Akedo Kid likes Vengeance is Mine and she always changes the lyrics and sings about her husband, Michael Kidd, who's the drummer Wilder. She always sings about Michael's penis, which is very weird and ultra hilarious. I'm messing with it. But yeah, funny song. In Touch With Your Feminine Side is pretty cool. It's kind of got a neat Rolling Stones kind of swagger to it, you know. Uh, Killed By Love is awesome. Other than that, this album's another kind of a turd sandwich. But, you know, if you bust it out, here's the inner, which is like the original CD cover. And it's a pretty cool vinyl. Check it out. It's got a clear. I remember this was called like a spider web kind of clear vinyl. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty awesome part of the collection, even if I don't really like this album at all. But it's got a couple decent songs on it. So, there you go. Coming in number 25 on my list. 2008's Along Came a Spider. Mm. All right. So, coming in number 25. Four on my list. This was kind of in Alice Cooper's early 80s new wave um, blackout period is what Alice Cooper likes to call it. He likes to call it the blackout period because he was so messed up on drugs and alcohol at the time that he doesn't remember recording any of these albums. So, and dude, I really love this period of Alice Cooper. I really dig it. But a couple of the albums I don't think are up to par with the rest of the catalog. So coming in at number 24 on my list. What was this? 1982's Zipper Catches Skin. Okay? Very weird album. You start to see some of the some of the keyboard synth laden new wave kind of stuff kind of start to kind of fade a little bit. This is kind of just more of like a post-punk kind of release you know and look at the album cover it's one of alice cooper's most strangest album covers it's, it says alice cooper at the top and it's just a bunch of the lyrics from the album very strange album very disappointing artwork for alice cooper like if you would have seen this back in the you know the bin at the record store back then this would have been hard as fuck to find i mean and then you look at the back alice cooper look at alice he's so strange and weird i love him I guess he was taking a piss in the men's room and uh, yeah, he got zipper catch his skin. I guess he got his ball bag caught up in his zipper and uh, maybe the red is in the background for the pain he's in. He's like, oh, oh God, oh. So yeah, this album, eh, not that great in my opinion. It's got some cool songs. Zorro's Ascent is pretty neat. Make that money, make that money, roll like honey from your tongue. And I know, cause he told me so. Told me so, I believe it. Yeah, Make That Money is cool. I'm the Future is awesome. From a very underrated 80s horror flick called Class of 1984. No Below Me, Homo Sapiens, Adaptable. I like girls. Uh, the Halloween kind of slasher flick inspired. Uh, tag your it. My favorite song off this album is, uh, do, 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 do. oh, definitely, uh, do, 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 do. what is it? Uh, shit. Remarkably Insincere. That song's pretty cool. You know, for the past couple albums, I forgot to tell you my favorite song. So we'll get back into that. But yeah, uh, Remarkably Insincere. This album is, it's okay. But still, not quite up to Alice Cooper standards. So yeah, my favorite song off of Pretty's For You is Elected. Favorite song off of Easy Action is Shoe Salesman. Favorite song off Welcome My Nightmare, I'll Bite Your Face Off. And uh, my favorite song off uh, Long Cave of Spiders is Vengeance Is Mine. And my favorite song off of The Zipper Catch's Skin, Remarkably Insincere. So now we're caught up. All right, so coming in at number 23. 23 on the list. Another part of Alice's early 80s blackout period. The blackout new wave period. This album's better than Zipper Catches Skin. This album is kind of very, uh, very early 80s pop rock, new wave, but it's also got a cool kind of Halloween kind of spooky goth 
vibe to it. It's a very gothy album, and I really respect that because I, I dig some goth stuff. And you know, there is a little goth deep down inside the black heart of Dick Twatkins. Ah! So yeah, so coming in number, what is this, uh, 23 on my list, Special Forces from 1981. Pretty good album. A little fun fact, back in the day, besides the first two albums, this used to be my least favorite Alice Cooper album. So you can see that it's kind of climbed up the ranking list. Yeah, who do you think we are? Special Forces in an armored car. Who do you think we are? We don't care. We don't care. Very cool song. Who do you think we are? I know, man, four or five, six years ago, Alice Cooper brought it back in the set list. I'd love to see it back in the set. Seven and Seven is, is a, okay. My favorite song on this album, Skeletons in My Closet. It almost sounds like a Michael Jackson song. It's almost like Alice Cooper doing Michael Jackson. You could have maybe been on the Thriller album. I know it's a very cool song. You're a movie, you're a movie, but the porno kind, you're a movie. That song's pretty cool. You want it, you got it, it's pretty awesome. Don't Talk Old to Me. Generation Landslide 81 with the live version, live. Pretty cool, I dig it. Prettiest Cop on the Block, set your souls on fire. Pretty cool. Vicious Rumors is another badass song. My favorite songs on this album, yeah. Who Do You Think We Are, Skeletons in My Closet, and uh, Vicious Rumors. Pretty sweet. And there's the back in this album. And this is a little rare edition. I think this is like one of the first pressing, because if you look, Got this song right there. Look at you over there ripping the sawdust from my teddy bear. That was supposed to be on the album, but it didn't make it. So the first couple uh, pressings had the song title on it. You know, and this album's kind of got the cool kind of military-esque Alice Cooper Special Forces logo. I've always loved that. That's pretty cool. Nothing fancy on the inside to show you. But yeah, coming to number 23, Special Forces from 1981. All right, so there's that. All right, coming in at number 22 on my list. 22 on my Alice Cooper album ranking, worst of first. This one, I got to say, this is probably going to blow the mind and maybe offend my rock and roll brother from another mother, my buddy Edwin Canastrasi, because I know Edwin really loves this album. And I think on his Alice Cooper video that he did, he praised this album a lot. Sorry, Edwin. But I had to do it. I had to do it. Coming at number 22 on my list. 1979. Or no. 1978. Excuse me. Alice Cooper. From the inside. I'm stuck here on the inside. And I'm looking out. There's no big disgrace. Where's my makeup? Where's my face? On the inside. On the inside. So yeah, Alice Cooper from the inside, if you open it up. I love, this is some of the best album marketing of all time. Check that out. Very cool, you know, on the back, it doesn't have what it did on the original. This is a reissue, but it's pretty good. But yeah, anyway, so this is Alice Cooper's 1978 album. I think after the Lace and Whiskey tour, 77, or no, 1978, whatever. After the Lace and Whiskey tour, I know Alice Cooper was in bad, bad shape. And that Shep Gordon and his wife Cheryl and Bob Ezrin uh, all tried to admit him into a psych ward to try to get him to stop drinking. Alice wasn't too crazy, but I think a lot of his problem was with drinking. So they admitted him into a, basically an insane asylum. And he was in there for a while and he met all these weird ass people, all these crazy characters. So he was very influenced by his stay in the mental institution. So he gets out, he hooks up with uh, Bernie Toppin, songwriter, lyricist of Elton John fame, with Elton John, and I'm pretty sure that there's some uh, Elton John band members on this album, and they crafted from the inside. Good album, I don't hate it, it's good, it's very theatrical, very, maybe a little too theatrical for my taste. Like Millie and Billy, not really into that. Inmates were all crazy, not really into that. Uh, but it's got some really great songs, like the title track from the inside, I Wish I Was Born in Beverly Hills. Wish I Was Born in Beverly Hills is cool. The Quiet Room is a... Uh, Nurse Rosetta is awesome. I love Nurse Rosetta. 
What she say? Uh, I'm suddenly twice my size. My pants are all wet inside. I've always kind of cackled and loved those pervy lyrics right there, but uh, Sirius is awesome. Kicks off side two. How you gonna see me now? Please don't see me ugly, babe. No, I let you down in oh so many ways. Beautiful ballad. How you gonna see me now? My favorite song on this album. Come on, Alice, keep it together. Come on, dude, keep it together. My favorite song on this album, uh, for Veronica's sake, where he's talking about how he has to escape the insane asylum so he can get home and feed his dog or some crazy shit. On paper, that sounds insane and ultra cheesy. But only Alice Cooper could write a kick-ass rock and roll song about getting out of insane asylum and go and feed your dog. Jackknife Johnny, Jackknife Johnny, you're a floor mopping flunky. I love Jackknife Johnny. Probably my second or third favorite song. Pretty good album. Uh, yeah, produced by Alice Cooper and Bernie Toppin. Executive producer Shep Gordon. Shep Gordon also probably pushed to have Alice Cooper put in a mental institution. Good album, man. Good album. And this is a reissue version that uh, Rhino Records did, which is pretty fantastic. So there's the inner sleeve. It's got Alice kind of looking all crazy and stuff. And then finally, after being a good boy, Alice Cooper was released. Look at him. There's all the people. There's Jackknife Johnny back there. There's Jackknife Johnny right there. He's like a Vietnam vet. And yeah. It's a cool stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, this is Alice Cooper's Elton John album. There's the cool kind of greenish blue vinyl that kind of fits and matches the album cover. Love that artwork. One of my favorite Alice Cooper album covers. But yeah, very good album. Uh, it just comes in at number 22 on my list. Sorry, Edwin. Sorry. But, you know, something's got to, it's all got to fall in line some way, somehow. All right, so there you go. Favorite song for Veronica's sake. I gotta get out of here. For Veronica's sake, she can look pretty weird. For Veronica's sake, I gotta get myself out of here. Love it, dude. Love it. God, we gotta speed up the time. This is going forever. This might be a three-parter. All right, so coming in at number uh, 21 from 1976, Alice Cooper goes to hell. You can go to hell. Really good album, uh, but Alice Cooper, this is his second solo album. Alice started flirting with, uh, you know, the kind of uh, disco. This is a very disco-lated album. And, you know, I'm a fan of disco, dude. I love me some Bee Gees, okay? I love me some disco. Casey and the Sunshine Band, dig that shit. But not exactly what I want from the Coop if you know what I mean. Not exactly. It's got some great songs. Go to Hell, badass song. Seen him play it live a couple times. You Gotta Dance is okay. Didn't we meet in the night in my sleep somewhere? Love that. I Never Cry. Break a heart, break a heart of stone. Open it up. Don't you leave it alone. Cause that's all I've got to give to you. Give the kid a break, guilty. The band on na na na, the man on na na na. Every time Guilty comes on, that riff, that ban na na, the man on na na na. It always makes me think of that Adam Sandler song from back in the 90s. Sloppy Joe, sloppy, sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe, sloppy, sloppy Joe. I don't know why. I always sing that when that riff comes on. Wait Me Gently, awesome ballad. Love it. One of my favorite Alice Cooper ballads. Wish You Were Here. Oh, great song. I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, eh. Going Home, eh. Good album. One of my favorite Alice Cooper album covers. Very kind of evil, creepy. My son Grayson loves this album cover. I think it kind of creeps him out, but he kind of likes it, you know? So yeah, coming in at number uh, 21 on my list. 1976, Alice Cooper goes to hell. All right. And if you notice in this video, a lot of times, because Alice Cooper usually does albums in like... Uh, pairs or phases so if you noticed in a lot of my ranking some of the albums that you know the way i rank them are kind of the way that they're kind of joined together and this is the third album in a row from this kind of uh mid to late 70s era 
So coming in at number 20 on my list, we're getting out of the 20s, finally. Got to go with 1977's Lace and Whiskey. Pretty good album. Pretty good album. Uh, it opens up with, It's hot tonight. Too hot for talking. Damn hot tonight. It's hot tonight. Uh, Lace and Whiskey, the title track is really cool. Uh, Road Rats is a badass song. I'd love to see Alice Cooper bring that back into the set list with his current band. That'd be amazing. Uh, Eubank Stomp. I never wrote those songs. Pretty cool. Uh, Damned If You Do. Uh, not too crazy about that. Uh, my God. My God. <laughs> my God. I love My God. The solo on that, I'm pretty sure it was played by Dick Wagner or Stephen Hunter. One of the two, I'm not for sure. But the solo in My God. Probably one of my favorite guitar solos of all time. But my favorite track on this album, and I know this is crazy, the most hated song in his whole discography, the unabashed disco funk ballad known as No More Love at Your Convenience. Dude, I love No More Love at Your Convenience. Alice Cooper's went on record saying that it's his least favorite song he's ever recorded and i gotta say dude it's one of my favorite alice cooper songs so like one of these days when i meet alice i'm gonna tell him that and i can't wait to see his reaction but yeah no more love at your convenience dun -dun 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 -dun. i love those violins but yeah. dun -dun 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 -dun. so cool good album i dig it and you know when i was uh, when i was in my early 20s and i kind of first got into this album i remember looking at the cover going what's this whiskey right here seagram's vo and i remember going that's what alice cooper liked to drink back then when he was in his alcoholic phase and shit and i remember going to the liquor store and buying seagram's vo and for a couple of years that was my drink of choice and every now and then i still like to drink some seagram's vo so thanks alice pretty very cool so yeah number 20 on my list 1977's Lace and Whiskey, my favorite song. No more love at your convenience. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a good pop tune. Coming in number uh, 19 on my list. From 1989, the glorious comeback. 1989's Trash. Poison, huge fucking song. Being a kid back then, 1989, 1990, 91. I remember seeing Poison, the music video for Poison on TV, hearing that song on the radio. That was a huge freaking song back then, dude. Spock, Spock, Spock in the dark. Why I Trust You is a pretty cool song, Only My Heart Talking. I know this is kind of like a sleazy, kind of late 80s, early 90s kind of style music, and I love that kind of brand of hard rock, rock and roll. I know uh, uh, Steven Tyler sings, Steven Tyler from Aerosmith sings on only my heart talking bed of nails he brought back kane roberts this maniacs in love with you love that song one of my favorite songs the whole album this maniacs in love with you but my favorite song on this album house of fire house of fire such a sleazy groove and cool fucking riff i know joe perry plays on that and Maybe Brad Whitford. I know Joe Perry does the solo. Very cool. Very cool stuff. There's the gatefold. Just got a bunch of lyrics and stuff. Really good album. So cut at number, uh, was it number 19 on my list from 1989? Trash. Okay. Now we got to go into number, uh, number 18 on my list. Here's the final album of the early 80s blackout period, okay? Final album of the Blackout period. Number 18 on my list from 1983. Da, 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 da. This album is freaking weird, dude. Very weird album, but you know what? I love it. Very new wavy, very goth, very new romantic kind of style. Opens up with that creepy da da piece where uh bob ezrin is like playing like the um playing the role of like a psychiatrist or a therapist and he's talking to alice and alice is just uh, kind of fucked up 
in enough 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 cool formerly warmer is a great song no man's land i got a job in atlanta and i'm all playing santa not because of any talent but because i was the only one the suit would fit no man's land is my favorite song on this talking about some schizophrenic dude that's working at santa claus at a shopping mall and he picks up some hot babe and quits his job and goes on a date with her and all kinds of crazy Alice Cooper shit. Very funny, awesome song. Dyslexia is cool. Scarlet and Sheba talking about two kind of freaky, hot and sexy s and sisters. Scarlet and Sheba, I guess. I Love America. Awesome song. Very uh, in satire talking about, you know, kind of redneck America and shit. Very cool. I would love to see him bring I Love America into the set list. Or really, I'd love to see any of these songs brought into the set list. That'd be pretty epic. Fresh Blood. Oh, I love Fresh Blood. Fresh Blood, a sanguinary feast is all he's living for. And he craves it more and more. Showgirls, businessmen in suits in the midnight rain. Oh, it's a good song. Pass the gun around. Sonny wakes up in the morning feeling kind of sick. Needs a little stole vodka, needs it really quick. Very depressing, cool song. This album was produced by Bob Ezra and yeah, it's Dick Wagner's on it. Awesome stuff. Prakash John plays bass on uh, uh, Fresh Blood. Prakash John, awesome killer bass player. One of the best bass of all time, in my opinion. Love it. Check him out. So yeah, coming in at number uh, 18 on the list. From 1983, Da 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 Da. My favorite song. No Man's Land, for sure. No Man's Land, yeah. Love it. So coming in at number, uh, what is this? Coming in at number 17 on my list. Here's an album that is kind of, in a lot of people's rankings I've seen, a lot of Alice Cooper fans I've talked to, a lot of people shit on this album. A lot of people don't really care for it too much. My neck's getting hot. Uh, but you know what? I love this album. And I got it when I first when it first came out. And I remember the first time I ever seen this album cover, or the first time I remember hearing about it coming out, was on September 11th, 2001. That day. That day when that crazy shit happened. You know, the twin, the, uh, the twin Towers, the bombing, and the chaotic, scary day. But yeah, I remember that day after school, me and my girlfriend at the time, rushed home. And I remember we ordered some Papa John's pizza and we're sitting there and we're watching the news and, you know, it was just fucking nuts, dude. Crazy time to live through. But I remember later on that evening, me and my mom, we had to go to Kroger. Uh, it's a grocery store there in Louisville, Kentucky or in the USA. We went to Kroger and while my mom did shopping, like I always did, I'd go to the magazine section and I'd look through this month's latest issue of Metal Edge metal edge magazine used to love it it was my bible back in the late 90s early 2000s and i remember skimming through it and i stopped on an ad for this album and i was like holy shit here in a couple weeks the brand new alice cooper album's coming out so i was hyped i was and i needed it that day so nonetheless coming to number 17 on my list, ranking list from 2001 alice cooper dragon town dragon town dude i love it I love me some Dragon Town. The other day I listened to this album for the first time in a while, and I forgot just how damn good this is, dude. Trigger Man, Deeper, the title track, track Dragon Town. Sex, Death, and Money's okay. My favorite track, Fantasy Man. I don't drink tea or watch Shapley. I sat around and watch TV. I hate opera. I hate Oprah. Don't fill my head with poetry. You just want to squeeze my masculinity. Don't you leave it alone. Oh, it's such good fantasy, man. So please understand, I'm not your fantasy man. Badass song, Somewhere in the Jungle. Disgrace Land's pretty cool. Sister Sarah is a classic Alice tune. I like to see him bust out Fantasy Man and Sister Sarah in the set list. Every woman has a name, I just wanna be God. It's much too late, my time has passed away. All my plans and dreams have all been dead. And the Sentinel, great album, 
Great album. I love it. I know a lot of people don't like it because they think it's too industrial or too new metal sounding, whatever. I love some Dragon Town. I remember this tour came to the Little Palace here in Louisville, Kentucky, and I couldn't go because, well, my dad was too much of a cheapskate to buy his tickets. Thanks, Dad. I'm just teasing. And here's the vinyl. This was put out by my buddies at uh, E1 Entertainment, which is now Monarch Records. So yeah, check that out. Cool kind of orange vinyl. Love this. This is a very cool addition to my Alice Cooper vinyl collection. So yeah, very good album. And I suggest that if you didn't like Dragon Town back in 2001, bust it out and get another shot. It's pretty excellent. All right, so here we go. We're going to get down to number 16. Number 16 on the list. This might be a little controversial, might be a little shocking. But you know what, guys? This is just my opinion. And, you know, we all hear music differently. We all hear things differently. What might be the best to you might not be the best to me. So don't bash me on the YouTube comment section, okay? Don't bash me. And I love this album. I love it. Become number 16. Got to go with 1971's Love It to Death. The first entry, well, not the first entry, but this is whenever the true, real deal Alice Cooper band was born, okay? This is when Alice Cooper really became Alice Cooper. You know, you got on the back, very cool album cover, back, cool album cover. I don't have the one where Alice has got his thumb sticking through the dress or whatever, but yeah, including their hit, I'm 18 and I don't know what I want. And to iconic talk about iconic that right there if this sums up alice cooper man i mean caught in a dream so what you don't know what i'm going through i'm 18 hello be my name you still got a long way to go black juju is awesome is it my body the second coming second coming's uh no i said coming's awesome never mind Ballad of Dwight Fry is a great song. Sunrise, eh, it doesn't really fit the album, but this album is very cool. I can't imagine what this would have been like hearing this shit back in 1971. Man, this is some heavy, heavy stuff for 1971, guys. Very cool. I'd probably have to say my favorite song on this album, probably the Ballad of Dwight Fry. I love seeing it. Like Either the Ballad of Dwight Fry or... 18, I'm 18, so cool, and Caught in a Dream, all good stuff. Very cool album, very kind of gothy, spooky sounding. So yeah, coming in at number 16 on my list, 1971's Love It to Death. Love it. And coming in number 15 on the list, another controversial pick. All right, gonna go with 1972's School's out schools out excellent stuff excellent title track a legendary song on the last day of school ever since this song has blared in elementary schools middle schools high schools shit i still play it my favorite track number the track number two my favorite song on the album looney tune oh love me some looney tune it's just a little insane a couple shots, I don't feel no pain. Hey, where have I been? And who are these scary men? Is this all real? Is this necessary? Or is this a joke? Love me some uh, Looney Tune. Uh, was Gutter Cat and the Jets is really cool. Blue Turk. Blue Turk is really awesome. Public Animal number nine. Alma Mater. I mean, very good album. Very good album. But it's just not as good as the stuff after it. So, yeah. Coming in number 15, guys. 1972's School's Out. Gotta say my favorite track. Definitely Looney Tune. I also love My Stars. When I seen Alice Cooper uh, last month, they did play My Stars. Great addition to the set list. And I also love Blue Turk. Earthworms rule your brain. Got that cool kind of saxophone part. Cool vibe, man. Love me some Alice Cooper. Love Alice Cooper. And that right there brings an ending to part one of the Alice Cooper. Weren't uh, ranking the albums 
worst to first, guys. So I want to thank you all for checking this uh, video out. If you like this video and you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell on there, and check out my band Wild Ride. W-Y-L-D-R-Y-D-E on Facebook, official Wild Ride on Instagram.com. Check us out on www.bandcamp.wildride.com. If you dig music like Kiss, if you like Judas Priest, Metallica, Motley Crue, if that's your kind of thing, you will fucking love Wild Ride. So without that being said, guys, I will see you on part two. Part two. I got you for the next two months of your life, Bender. Don't mess with the bull, young man. You'll get the horns. Yeah, but I'll see you episode two, guys, coming up very quick. Until then, be good.